Hey guys, this week's Bungie stream was the last of the bunch, and it offered some changes that we'll see in the Crucible, both good and bad for some players. So, let's go over what's happening. All changes were outlined with a few new changes in this week at Bungie also. Here's what they had to say. Iron Banner is getting changed in a loot system fashion, and more gear will be dropping. All legendary engrams have been taken out and replaced with Iron Banner drops. Ghosts and artifacts from the rank 3 and 5 packages are now going to be awarded at 320 light instead of 310. Finally, the bounty that required you to gain 2500 points in a match and win has been changed to 1500 points and a match completion. Special ammo is also going to be available on spawn once again, but in limited capacity. Though be careful of your ammo because heavy ammo will only spawn once per game, and special ammo crates now give you less than before, and spawn less as well. You will also overall carry less special ammo in general. Now moving on to reviving friendly players. It is now required to stay near teammates for a revival, as running through with certain exotics like Crest of Alpha Lupi or Light Beyond Nemesis will now provide no revive. In order to get the revive, you have to be near them. Overshields that are provided from reviving have also been lowered to allow more res snipes from multiple sniper rifles. As for weapon changes, here's what's happening. Auto rifles will be getting reworked, and low rate of fire weapons like the Soros Regime or an Answering Cord are getting a 2.3 increase to base damage. High rate of fire weapons like the Doctrine of Passing get 2.5 decrease in the same category. Hip fire accuracy has been increased as well. Pulse rifles are in a decent place, for the most part at least, but those slower rate of fire pulses, messenger, spare chains, etc., are getting a 3% increase to base damage. Hand cannons are not getting much done to them, but the ammo in your inventory is being increased across the board, so you're not as likely to run out, unless you're playing in PvE, which more than likely will lead to it. Fusion rifles get a blanket stability buff across the board, maybe making them worth using again after 2.0 left them in a crippled state following a blanket nerf to stability for nearly no reason. The hot secondary subject used to be shotguns, but this time around it's snipers. Sniper rifles are getting a few changes that make them more long-range weapons like intended. Snipers can look to see a base zoom increase across the board, so you're going to have to be a little farther out to see your target well. Two frames of zoom time have also been added across the board, so it'll take just a little longer to aim in. Snapshot has also been given a nerf, and now adds a 20% benefit to zoom time, down from 30. Stability has also been taken down a peg across the boards, so you're going to have a little more recoil when aiming down the sights and firing. Finally, Zen moment bugs that existed have been fixed, and also changed on a few new guns. Now for the exotic weapons that are changed. First off is a weapon that I'm sure you're getting killed with right at this moment, which is the Mita Multi-Tool. This weapon is currently hands down the most popular weapon in the Crucible. Bungie even provided a use chart for reference, which you can see here. Mita is going to have a small change, and funny enough, it's one I actually mentioned in my State of the Crucible video that needed to happen, and that is having high caliber rounds, the hidden perk, removed completely, which causes the flinch. Suros Regime is an old classic that had a new twist added when the spinning up perk came into play. Since it has really dominated versus the focus fire option. To balance that out, focus fire now grants a plus 45 range stat, and spinning up has been lowered to proc 4 shots later in the mag than before. Hawkmoon, Mild Faithful, is getting a buff back to what seems to be like how it was before 2.0, which, in my State of the Crucible video, again, said it was fine as it was, and did not warrant a nerf. Here we are getting an increase to base range by 10, which should help with the accuracy and those phantom bullets. The last word has been toned down a bit, by way of the last word named Perk, where the bonus hip fire damage has been completely taken out. The stability and accuracy buff is still there, but no extra damage is going to be given. Bane of the Crucible Thorn is also getting another nerf to make it less lethal with the dot damage. The damage over time is now 2 as opposed to 7, and it also has been brought down in the duration of the dot time from 6 ticks to 4. Also, the poison effect on your screen has been lightened to ensure you're not completely covered in that green stuff while you're burning. Icebreaker was also changed, having an increase to scope zoom optics to 6x. Base handling has also been reduced to the lowest for snipers. Base target acquisition has been lowered by 25%, 
and the issue where loading your icebreaker up to max ammo, then switching weapons to get special ammo, no longer works. Drake's Promise, which wasn't the best in year one, is getting changed, and it has been given more aggressive tracking and locks onto targets that you aim at. Rate of fire has been reduced as well to compensate for this, and a damage falloff has been made to match the sidearm archetype. Lord of Wolves and Queen Breaker's Bow get an ammo inventory reduction. Telesto has had a bug fix where shooting friendly guardians cause them to receive damage. Chaperone was given a fix to fix precision damage problems it had. And finally, the Quillum's Terminus, or the most popular machine gun, has been changed and given a reduction to base stability by 9 and a reduction to base inventory by 15. Finally, the King's Fall Auto Rifle, Anguish of Dis... Dris... Dristan? Dristan. Has been given a stability stat increase by 12, and all King's Fall primaries have been given an increased reload speed. Moving on, let's talk about Warlocks. Some changes are due for the class, and some are good and some are bad, depending on the side you're on. First off is Stormcallers, which have been one of the main classes used currently in the Crucible. Here we can expect to see Landfall getting nerfed and it's no longer going to cause insane blindness upon activation. Landfall itself can also no longer pop a Titan bubble. As for Sunsingers, Flame Shield will still be available, but you're not going to be getting as much protection as before. Flame Shield has been brought down significantly. Using Radiance to revive yourself will also result in a shortened super time. One topic that ended up not getting touched due to, quote, having to redesign the entire class, unquote, is the Firebolt Grenade Viking Funeral combo. Hopefully this sees some sort of adjustment in the future, but in time, we will see. That'll about do it here, Guardians. What do you think of the new changes? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more Destiny content. Thanks for watching.